am obsessed with this idea now that there's this thing called constrained creativity, and that is what everybody who is creative does, not just scientists. Science is incredibly interesting version of a constrained creativity. And all the great artists that I know have imposed intense constraints on their work. They, you know, like a, a great example is, um, uh, what's his name, the, the light guy, the light guy, James Terrell. Yeah. He, um, he only works with light as his medium. I mean, what an insanely intense constraint to put on himself. So much so that he tries to remove the room. He removes a point of focus. He removes an object, an image. All he wants is the light. And, um, and his work is unbelievably transcendent because of the severity of his constraint. And I think that this is something that um, my friend Pedro Ferreira, who's in an event right now, I think somewhere in the World Science Festival, um, is the one who used that phrase for me the first time, constrained creativity, when we were postdocs at Berkeley. He's an astrophysicist, and it was just like, yeah. the word, just having words to lay on it, was, it was like re a revelation. There's something paralyzing about a lack of constraint. Somebody mm -hmm. says to you, you can, you can write a book about anything. I'd rather someone <laughs> say, your next book has to be about that building across the street, or that crate of peaches, I don't care. And, and that, would, to me, would be this amazing creative challenge. How can Terry I Terry Gross this? gave you the, <laughs> the constraint. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Give me some constraint, please. <laughs> but I think it fosters creativity. Absolutely. Yeah.